Hi, I'm Brad. Still, I am testing out a new microphone today to prepare for an event I am planning to go to where I am not really used to using mobile microphones like on my shirt, so uh, bear with me. So a lot of you come to my channel for leaks or VR stuff or really just VR leaks, which are the first two things combined into one thing. But I would say a large subset of you have started following me when I start reporting on Steam VR leaks and like the data mines related to that. I plan to have a large video tomorrow or maybe the next day of the giant leak news weekly, bi-weekly, I don't really know video to showcase all the things I've heard and found in the past couple weeks. However, there's been some small stuff added to Steam VR, and I like to have a separate video in case that happens. So that's what this video is. There has been some updates to Steam VR beta. But before I go into that, uh, there's probably some of you who also aspire to be a VR content creator, or maybe you already make content yourself. Well, I've recently started a job as a community manager for Live, the mixed reality software platform. And to make my job easier so I can do this second job easier, uh, if you have any cool mixed reality clips or videos you're proud of that I can showcase in the Live Cross platform channels, please let me know by DMing me on Twitter or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, let's get right into the actual Steam VR updates itself. So there's been a couple small ones. They're not large like the giant video I did of almost a month ago where we found that there's a new non-proof of concept version of the Valve Deckard that is being tested at least called Mini D. But there is some small things we can go off of and really some of the things are really good for like sort of ease of use, especially if you're doing a lot of cool tweaking or modding of the actual VR hardware or software yourself. Very exciting stuff here. So first we'll go with 1.22.7. Uh, this came out about a few weeks ago and I did report about it on Twitter, but I want to report about it here because it was just not enough to make its own video until we got a more recent update. So we've been recently getting some strings and some references to something called a compatibility mode for Steam VR. This compatibility mode can include its own notifications, but the most interesting concept for this compatibility mode is it should increase compatibility with headsets that are either in the works or is not natively supported by the input systems or really other things related to Steam VR. It can simulate both HMDs, the actual things you put on your head, like basically fooling Steam VR to think that you might be wearing a Vive headset or an Index headset or even a Quest 2 headset. The most notable thing right now that people can use is the fact that you can simulate the controllers for HMDs no matter what you're using. The best example is this work in progress glove that's been in work in progress for way too long because I've been too busy. This is a Lucas VR Tech glove. It's basically a uh, 3D printed mashup of a bunch of servos and off the market parts to make a relatively affordable VR glove that so many people wish for. And it only works really with Steam VR. And the main reason they've gotten it working up to this point is because they have the actual controllers in each fingers that have their own sort of, I guess, haptic feedback. They use it to do finger tracking by simulating an index controller that has its own sort of uh, variable finger tracking. However, when I talked to the developers of this uh, hardware and software, they said that they've had to create a pretty hacky driver to do that simulation. But ever since this update that is now natively supported within the Steam VR code, people like who make the Lucas VR Tech glove can have much better and less hacky simulation of controllers. So if they want to have finger tracking in games that only support the index controllers, well now this glove, whenever that full update is pushed, can theoretically have native finger tracking with the glove for any game that supports index finger tracking. It's also good for new companies that are trying to experiment with controllers or, or if you're like hacking together stuff. I always believe that PC platforms, their biggest superpower is open source and modding. The community can do some really great things together. We see that with all the flat screen games being modded to VR only on PC for the most part. And that extends to hardware too. We wouldn't have gloves like this if the PC platform was as closed as sort of consoles were or some of the new standalone headsets coming out. Again, it's the PC superpower and Valve is trying to allow people to pretty much benefit off of that. And there's also sort of the fact that I mentioned earlier, you can simulate actual HMDs uh, themselves where they have like a generic serial code and everything. It's basically fooling more like legacy hardware or software, I mean, uh, basically games that used to do checks on what headset you would be wearing and would only support headsets like the Vive, for example. 
There are some games on SteamVR that have that sort of weird check going on. So if there's new HMDs coming out, whether from Valve or other third parties that maybe not have the exact uh, connections with Valve to get that fixed or the developers don't want to update their game, they can just fool the SteamVR software to say, hey, this is a Vive, please work for me. And the most interesting thing is apparently the compatibility mode can actually create and get their own overlay interfaces and notifications. And compatibility mode can seemingly uh, be enabled by itself, probably uh, hardware creators, my gimbal just shied, so we're just gonna pretend that didn't happen. But yeah, the compatibility mode can also be automatically enabled, probably depending on whether the hardware manufacturer does not want to create their own drivers and it's easier for them to just simulate other headset or controller drivers for some reason. Um, again, I really feel that's mostly for tinkerers or people that are just making small scale or small production volume um, accessories. But yeah, it, that was pretty much the big thing that was being worked on in the back end for 122.7. There was a 122.8 CMVR beta, but it was mostly just fixing stuff up that they released in that previous beta. Last night, we just got 1.22.8, and that was really uh, related to the fact that the Valve has been working very hard on overlays and basically everything related to like the SteamVR uh, desktop, which you can actually pull out windows and put in your world or on your hand and add support for probably future better overlays um, within using that systems that they're already making and polishing everything related to that. The most obvious changes is they improved the styling on overlay control bar. Um, it's basically that bar below the giant windows you have. Before they were a very dark gray and they weren't able to size with the actual window itself. Um, so even if you had like a mega ultra wide monitor, that bar would just kind of stick in the middle at the same size no matter what. Now it stretches to the size of windows and they made it lighter and looks a lot nicer for the eyes. And surprisingly, I didn't even realize this until they added this update, but the actual buttons on the, the, the bar that would allow you to set the windows into your world space or on your hand, they didn't have tool tips. So if you didn't really know what they did by just clicking on them before, you just had no idea what they would do. I mean, the icons were not very obvious to what they meant. So yeah, um, tool tips are a feature that were finally implemented. Again, I, I, I can't believe that was not implemented before, but hey, better late than never. They've also improved a lot of stuff related to the actual laser pointing and making sure things can stay clicking with all these windows and overlays. Um, a lot of problems related to some apps maybe not letting you to regain access of your cursor, especially on the Valve Index. Um, there might still be some issues as always related to that, but Valve is trying to fix it. Those were pretty much the most notable things on the actual obvious and like things in the patch notes, but there were a couple things I want to mention that were in the back end for the data mining side. Um, it sounds like, again, I've talked a lot about this prism process that's basically a whole new layer for Steam VR that they've been working on for a while. It came out uh, first shown in like when the Deckard strings first came out, so it's clearly a brand new system related to either future hardware or just stuff they're working on for a maybe SteamVR 2.0, but um, they're allowing the uh, SteamVR to basically elevate that process to what it needs to be. Again, just a lot of polishing for the Prism process for whenever that will go live to everyone, including us. And there was one more little tiny thing. We don't know exactly what they're doing, but there's um, an API called VR Camera for Lighthouse-based uh, HMDs, like you know anything that Valve has touched, basically the Vive, HTC Vive Pro, or the index, they all run on Lighthouse drivers. Well, Valve has done some updates to the actual pass-through cameras API in there, and while we don't know what that's going to do, it's long been my suspicion that just like every other company, Valve's next HMD will have some sort of mixed reality features. They've worked with a company called Arcturus Vision that is working on uh, computer vision, allowing you to basically be able to mark things in your, 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 your area and be able to overlay probably the actual overlays that they've been working so hard with polishing. So for example, uh, in my big video, I last talked about SteamVR updates, there was leaks of a, um, a desktop mode icon that is also supposed to go with all these dashboard and the, these overlay updates. So clearly they're either redoing or adding a new feature called theater, which I would hope it's the ability to be able to actually play your Steam games in VR when headsets become more comfortable, super high resolution, and have mixed reality pass through. If you have a giant empty wall in your room, it would be great with the actual slam tracking to be able to mark out the, the, the references of the corners of the wall 
and just automatically create a giant screen of an overlay or a flat Steam VR or Steam game that you want to play with a controller or even simulate uh, controllers with your actual gamepad controllers, which most VR controllers are going for this gamepad buttony trigger, uh, you know, basically everything we've seen for gaming thus far. I'm actually working on a large video related to that. I don't want to give too much away, but if you follow my Twitter, you probably have seen some glimpses of this large video that I think will impress a lot of people because people are already doing some really cool stuff with overlays. It's just not been really focused on too much and I think it has a lot of potential. Anyway, that's everything from these small two updates. I just felt it was worth to make a whole video about. Um, if you enjoyed this video and you want to support me, go to bradsmells.com slash Patreon and special thanks to Again, these people that support me um, $25 or more, that helps me a lot and I expect to make my work-life balance even better because I'm gonna be looking into hiring an editor so I can push out more videos just like this and maybe with better editing because I know most of my videos have been talking head videos, not that I've really wanted to change that, but um, you know, YouTube's a full-time job, mostly the research side of things and the, you know all that other stuff. And with the live stuff, um, yeah, I'm going to need more help in making this channel better. And we have some really cool videos coming up related to some events happening in May and June. Uh, one of those seems to be related to smell and VR. So that's exciting. Bye.